Hi, I'm Roger, and I make air traffic control games and simulations. In 1993, I wanted nothing more than to be an air traffic controller. This game, some of you might recognize, it came out in 1990. It was a DOS game called Tracon. It's not my game, but this was my inspiration for the career that I have 20 years later. Uh, when I was accepted into the air traffic control school, I, my friends and I, my peers and I, we would play this game for hours. We were crazed over it, and we'd challenge each other to see who could move planes the best. A little louder? Can't hear me? How's that now? Thank you very much. So this is the, the game that kind of inspired me, and uh, fast forward 20 years, I'm still controlling planes in the Vancouver area. Eight years ago, I started making my own air traffic control games, and I incorporated myself as Big Fat Simulations. So this was my first game that I ever made, and it, it kind of sucked, I'll be honest with you. But it was fun to make, and I loved it. Uh, flight simulation enthusiasts really liked it, and that's something that I fortunately learned early, is that people who like flight simulations, they also like air traffic control games. It's got to be the same part of the brain. So, uh, see, radar is pretty easy to simulate. You just make a blip and you move the blip across the screen. There's not a lot of complicated graphics and you don't need a big, powerful computer to run it. But I did realize that uh, I needed to simplify this and make it a little more fun in order to get people to like my game. I am entirely self-taught. I've read lots of dummies books. I think I started an action script for dummies. I couldn't find anything called coding for complete idiots. I would have bought that if they'd sold that. But I broke a lot of rules when I was coding. I had class files with 4,000 lines and just a mess. I'm not much better now, but that's okay. Uh, so this is uh, when Airport Madness was born, 2008. Fairly simple game, anybody can play it. It passed the mom test. I gave it to my mom and she nodded her head and said, oh, that's, that's very nice, thank you. But it's easy for anyone to pick up and play. It's very basic, crappy art. <laughs> um, it was free and I used a company called Mochi Ads to distribute it and make money off of ads. I got a lot of emails from people asking me to add features. So I did, and I came up with more crappy art. But this game actually had a little more to it. There were levels, and each level would make the game more complicated by adding a new runway or a new taxiway. And what I changed with this game was I made a premium version. So I took out the ads, I added my own ads. Free version promotes the full version, and that worked out well for me. A year later, I decided to try to improve the artwork, and I noticed a lot of games would take Google Earth imagery and run their action over top of it, and I didn't like the look of that, so I hired somebody to make me some maps that look better than Google Earth, maybe? A little bit? Uh, this was my first Facebook game. This was when the iPhone was starting to happen, and people were getting away from bigger and bigger monitors and wanting to have small devices. I was starting to get a lot of people asking, have you made it for iPhone? And so that's when I started partnering with uh, companies to port my games over to mobile devices. Th this game was the first game that I hired a full-time artist for. Uh, she did a great job. She didn't let me do any of the artwork. She'd seen my amazing artwork from before and she said, no thanks, I can, I'll take it from here. So I took care of the crappy code, and she did the beautiful art, and it's the first thing I ever made that actually resembled kind of a game. My next game, I decided to stop counting. Airport Madness 5, Airport Madness 26. <laughs> I decided to give it a name. This game I, I love. It's a time machine game. You start in 1925, you're controlling little tiny aircraft, little Curtis Jennies out of a grass field and each level is a new year where something gets added, like a terminal building or a runway. And it was insanely complicated to organize the artwork. We had to zoom out every 10 years or so to get additional runways in. Unfortunately, this game did not do well. I, I basically forgot to make it fun, I think. It's really just one airport over and over and over. So I decided not to ever do that again. The, sixth version of Airport Madness came out through two years ago, 
and it's the first game I ever made that's based on real-world airports. I spent a lot of time unnecessarily researching these airports and trying to mimic the real-world procedures, and to this day I have not received a single complaint about the procedures being inaccurate. No one has ever called me and said, there are no runway 31 departures in Vancouver. So I understand now that I don't need to try to be real. I just need to try to be fun if I can. This was my first Steam game. I put it on Steam a year ago. It got greenlit uh, after about a month and a half, and it's done well. It's getting reasonably positive feedback. So what I'm working on today is really exciting to me because I've finally escaped Flash. I've been in Flash until very recently. Now I'm in Unity, and it was tough to learn, but now I love it. It's a, just, I just love the platform. My game has not changed. If you try to play my, this game, it's no different than the previous ones. The control actions are identical. You're now in a 3D environment, though. So Unity gives you the opportunity to do a lot. I could have really developed the heck out of this thing, but I really wanted to make the transition easy for my followers from two-dimensional, top-down, view from the sky, to a three-dimensional environment. I even added a Twitter feed. This is how I communicate with the player to let them know how they're doing. If you're doing a great job, people tweet about how wonderful this airport is, and they'll complain if you don't. I'm waiting to hear back from Twitter's lawyers. Uh, in my defense, that's a crow, and uh, Unity, everyone knows Unity Word uses a, a mountain bluebird, I believe. Every bird watcher worth his salt knows that, right? So I think I'm okay. After seven games, Airport Madness games, I've made some rules for myself about how to make an air traffic control game. The first one is you've got to have lots of conflict points. I, I've seen my competition games and they're amazing looking, but I suspect they're missing this. You've got to have runways that cross, you have to have airports that are fully laden with opportunities for disaster. Fun before realism, that works for my game. There are games that I love. If I'm playing a sniper game and I'm on top of a building and I'm aiming my M24 at a, at a target a mile away, I want that to feel very real. But my game, it, it's best that I stay away from real and I just stick to the fun. Uh, in Vancouver Airport, if you were to time how long it takes for Air Canada flight to back out of the gate and get to the runway, that takes about eight minutes. In my game, it takes 25 seconds. So I move quickly. Uh, yeah, big, clap, big crashes are not nice, but I've seen YouTube videos of my games and I know that's what people are enjoying. Extract the boring stuff. I don't do things like weather information, procedures, ground control, communication between controllers. I just stripped it of all of that and I try to focus on a couple of runways and a control panel. Uh, ignore suggestions. I mean that in the nicest of ways. I think what I'm trying to say is you've got to have a vision for your game and stick to that and allow yourself to wear the badge that says I'm the expert of my particular game. I like suggestions and when I first started this series I did listen to what people had to say because I really didn't know what I was making. But now that I've had a reasonable amount of success, I, I just stick to what I know is the right thing. So there it is, that's the big crash. Uh, not bad graphics for a guy that's brand new to Unity. Not amazing either. But Unity, with Unity, this just fell together. It took me about an hour. I didn't have to experiment too much. People say that it looks good and it works well on Android. So here's what I've learned. My biggest mistake in eight years is that sometimes I'm too nice and I let other people drive. Uh, I've had artists that start to uh, exert their knowledge, and I let them take charge. The smartest thing I ever did was not being afraid to expand to new platforms. In 2010, I was in my happy place in Flash, coding an action script. It was like a safe neighborhood for a child to grow up. It was Flash Builder is a safe neighborhood for a developer to grow up and try things. And I took the leap and got the game onto mobile devices and Steam. I'm glad I did, I'm glad I wasn't afraid to make those changes. What would I do differently? 
maybe I would have stuck to a single version of Airport Madness because right now the naming convention is insane. It's, uh, there's Airport Madness 3, there's Airport Madness 3D, there's next year I guess there's going to be Airport Madness 3D2. I'll have to figure out that. But if I just made a single game, like a snowball, maybe it would have gotten some mass, a little more mass than what's happened instead. So uh, this is straight off of the Oculus website. I, I probably should have come up with something else, but I, I don't think they'll mind. I went to GDC this year, and the big talk is VR, as you know. They're saying that if you build it, they will come. Don't expect to make a lot of money in 2016, but maybe 2017. So I am selfishly going to wait a little while until people start buying yachts, and then maybe I'll start... It's a lot of work in Unity. You've got to click a button. You've got to click a a little box, I think, uh, in Unity to make your game VR. So we'll go back to the beginning and I'll just wrap this up and say I'm really excited about my series. It's been a lot of fun. If I could offer any advice to anybody, I would say uh, that discoverability seems to be dead in the app stores and the web, and I think the key these days is to build a following, get people to buy your games and then want to come back and buy them again. I'm huge on customer service. If somebody wants their money back, they get it back. If they bought their game from iTunes and iTunes won't give their money back, I'll PayPal them their money back. And thank you very much for the last 12 minutes. Here.